Hey, <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Jason Explains Things. I have an awesome Honda mini trail themed video for you today. Uh, this is my 1994 Honda Z50R. Uh, the Z50s are, are legendary with, uh, with any, anyone who's learned to ride a motorcycle. Frankly, when you're a little kid, your, your, your dad, without your mom's permission, uh, hands you one of these and says, ride it, son or daughter. Today I'm gonna to go over all the major steps on how to keep your Honda Z50 or similar motorcycle running forever because if you do your part, the bike does its part, they will not die. But before we do all that, let's run a little montage of footage that I've shot of this little bike over the years. Well, pretty cool, right? All of that footage was shot before I started Jason Explains Things, so you got a little bit of a before the channel video there for you. But anyway, also before we get started, wanted to show a couple things about the bike that are not stock, a little bit different. First one being these handlebars. Uh, these are BMX style handlebars that I added just so that a person over six feet tall, such as myself, could ride this around without hitting my legs. The exhaust. The exhaust is from Super Trap. I think it is vintage to the 90s. I think it was probably done around the time when this bike was new, from what I've been told. Uh, definitely adds a little more pep and has an incredibly rad sound. I suspect that the previous owner, again, being somebody who loved this thing and took really good care of it, it might have a little bit more displacement than it says. Uh, here, it still says 49 cc's, but I think it might have been bored out because this thing is a wheelie machine. Anyway, let's get started with the oil change. Hey, it's future Jason coming at you. Hey, I wanna uh, warn you about something coming up. If you plan on following this video to do the oil change and then the valve adjustment, uh, when you open the uh, access cap to the lower valve, that will let oil out if you were to say, do your oil change and complete it and then do the valve adjustment, you might have to add oil in uh, a second time. So uh, that's, that's a warning. <laughs> Hey, I'm at my workstation that I just did a video about putting together. Uh, it's a really good idea to measure how much oil you took out, if you can. Uh, I took out just a little bit over 20 ounces of the old oil. As far as the new oil, uh, there is a lot of really good information in your owner's manual. But of course, the oil that Honda is going to suggest to you is going to be their own, which is Honda GN4 10W40. Oh, and a couple other things really quick that the manual does say. Um, again, 10W40 is preferred, 10W30 is okay, depending, um, and they give you a little chart of the, uh, of the temperature ranges that they recommend for you. But they do clearly say, do not use oils with graphite or molybdenum additives in them because they can adversely affect clutch operations. So if you use a different type of oil, just check to see if those are in there because you don't want them. All right, all right, sound good? Move on, cool. Okay, that is almost to the top. That is awesome. I'll do a final level check and probably add a tiny bit more once the bike's on the ground, but I think we can move on. Okay, with the oil change out of the way, we can move on to checking and possibly adjusting our valve clearance or valve lash, which I've actually never done before on this bike, so let's do it together. Uh, to do that, you're gonna need to remove the left crankcase cover right here, and you're gonna need to remove the upper and lower valve access caps. So looking right there, there's the rocker arm, the valve we're gonna be adjusting if necessary right there. This is your generator flywheel. And to adjust this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is turned counterclockwise to a T mark that we're gonna see. And right now, that is your uh, indicator mark on the crankcase that you're gonna to wanna to line up with. So 
turn this counterclockwise here. So we have an F and then we have a T, so right there. The check and adjustment needs to be made at the top of the compression stroke when both the intake and the exhaust valves are opened. An easy way to determine if I am on the compression stroke is if I can move the rocker arm. So you can see that, see how I can move it? That means that that is lined up correctly. If this was immovable, if I wasn't able to wiggle it like that, that would mean I just need to rotate, again, counterclockwise 360 degrees so that I can move this. Take your feeler gauge, uh, which would be your 0 0.002 inches or 0 0.05 millimeters, and just kind of wiggle that in there like this. I think this adjusting screw is set a little bit too tight. I can barely get the feeler gauge in there once you can kind of get it wedged in. See, yeah, I think that this is probably a smidge too tight. See, loosen this lock nut and then turn this out a little bit. Okay, we're gonna take our nine millimeter wrench and break this lock nut loose. Just a little loose. Here we go. There we go, cool. There we go. This is all kind of, you learn, you learn this by feel over time. There we go, I'd say that's good right there. So I'm gonna leave the feeler gauge in Hard to get a good shot of this, but while holding that adjusting screw, you tighten the lock nut and you're good to go. Okay. So the bottom one here adjusts just the same way as the top. And another good way to make sure that you are at the right size is just go up to the next size of feeler gauge, put it in there and see if it fits. And if it fits, uh, you're probably still a little bit too loose. But that's how you do it. So let's put these caps back on, uh, top off our oil, and uh, move on to the next thing. Before we move on to the carburetor, let's quickly chat for a second about the spark plug. So of course, spark plug goes in right there. Uh, the stock one that you usually find would be from NKG, and that would be the CR6 HSA. You're, we're gonna go ahead and pull this one out. We're gonna see, uh, I think it's probably fine, but we're gonna see if it looks too, you know, too black or oily, anything like that. We got ourselves a CR6 HSA. Okay, so we got our new Champion Spark Plug, the Z9Y. We're gonna go ahead and check the gap right now. Your gap on your spark plug is supposed to be at 0.02 to 0.03 inches. So that's 0.02 inches right there. I'm also a big fan of using a little bit of anti-seize on your spark plugs to avoid any sticking over time. So just take a tiny bit, thread your new spark plug in by hand, and then once you got it bottomed out, just go ahead and tighten it up with your socket. Cool. New carburetor time. If you're just doing a tune-up on your bike, you don't need to swap out the carburetor, you know, go ahead and skip to the next part. But um, I'm gonna be doing that today because this one has always been a little bit iffy. Uh, a family member of mine uh, who shall remain nameless um, wanted to ride this bike and I'm like, okay, yeah, go ahead. And uh, you know, this person promptly crashed this bike and uh, the internals of the carburetor got messed up. I've been wanting to replace this with a good one for many, uh, for many years, frankly. And I found this one. This is the same, this is a genuine Kine from Japan carburetor. Um, the same, this same one will work on many different Honda small motorcycles. Let's go ahead, we're gonna disconnect the uh, air box, air cleaner here, disconnect the fuel line, and the throttle cable and swap this out for this guy. Bam. Wow, I was expecting that to be dirtier. Handle is working good, snaps back. Awesome. I'm gonna wait to start the bike until I do a couple more steps 
then we're gonna take the bike out and have some fun. But I wanted to quickly uh, share with you what the manual says about uh, dialing in your carburetor. Uh, we have two adjustment screws. The top one is your throttle screw, and the one below it is your air uh, mixture screw. To adjust the fuel mixture by turning the air screw, which is the one on the bottom, turn the air screw clockwise until you hear the engine miss or decrease in speed, then counterclockwise until the engine again misses or decreases in speed. Set the air mixture exactly in between those two extreme positions, all right? From a completely closed position, the correct setting uh, between those two extremes will be about one and a half turns out from extreme all the way in. If the idle speed changes after adjusting the fuel mixture, um, readjust your idle after your engine has warmed up a little bit. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step, which is we're going to clean a little bit and oil our chain. Our chain is looking fantastic. All of the um, the front and rear sprocket are also looking good. It's a great time to check that while you're at it. You want to make sure the uh, slack in your chain is about 15 to 25 millimeters. If you did have to adjust it, mine doesn't, but if you did have to adjust it, adjust it you would loosen your rear axle nut and then you have your these adjusting nuts on both sides and you just tighten those evenly. But that's that, really easy stuff. Well, we are almost done working on ours. Uh, <laughs> well, we are almost done working on our mini trail today. I want to go over two more things really briefly before we wrap everything up. First is checking for uh, brake shoe wear to see if your brake shoes need to be replaced. It is incredibly easy to check this on these Hondas. Uh, I'll get a close-up shot of this. If you can see on the brake lever here, you have a little indicator arrow, and then you also have a mark on your hub. Um, under full braking, uh, if those two arrows line up, that means that you are going to need to replace your brake shoes. As you can see on mine, we got tons of life left in these. Uh, I, obviously, I think the rear brake gets used a lot more than the front, you know, to do too cool like slide out moves and stuff. Let's go ahead and check the back. Yeah, we got tons of life left in these brake shoes. So we know that that is totally fine on this bike. Um, the other thing uh, to adjust how much slack you have in your brake cables, you have these adjusting nuts here on the front and right there on the back. Turn them clockwise to make the cables tighter so the brake engages sooner uh, and turn it counterclockwise to make it looser. Um, obviously, with the brake disengaged, you want both your wheels to be able to spin freely. And one more thing about tightening your brake cables, you want to make sure to not over tighten them because if they're over tightened and you engage your brake under heavy braking, they might snap on you. And I know that from firsthand experience. My brake cable decided to snap itself like a stupid jerk. The only other thing we're gonna talk about today is Tire pressure, you want your rear tire, on, at least on the vintage of my bike, you want the rear tire to be 18 PSI and the front tire to be 15. So let's adjust those and uh, then we will uh, maybe go take this thing for a ride. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna go take this little guy for a ride. Uh, a couple more things before we wrap everything up. Uh, be sure to use, uh, honestly, if you can use ethanol-free uh, gas, do that. If you can't, uh, use premium and try to use fuel stabilizer. Also, one thing I like to do with actually every single carbureted small engine thing I have is when I'm running it, um, when I'm done, about to be done riding for the day, I will turn the fuel valve off and allow the bike to run out of gas. Oh, and as of today, as I'm filming this, 
the channel should reach its 40,000th subscriber. So thank you all very much for your support. It means a lot. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you actually see when I upload a video. I just started a new job. So the videos are gonna be more spread out as I go in the future, so notifications are gonna really help you know like, oh, holy crap, a new Jason Explains Things video. What a surprise. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for lots of other Honda themed videos coming up and also a lot of other great videos too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go.